I'm here in the uh, Korea-Vietnam hangar, uh, standing in front of the POW-MIA bracelet display. In 1970, there were nearly 3,000 missing Americans in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. And uh, some of them had been gone for six or seven years. Um, we were getting no information from the North Vietnamese. Uh, families didn't know whether their loved ones was, were dead or alive. <clears throat> so two college girls <clears throat> in L.A. decided uh, that if people wore bracelets uh, with these guys' names on them, that would be, bring attention to that problem. Uh, and perhaps a government uh, could get, could perhaps put pressure on the government to do something about it. Uh, over five million of these bracelets were worn in the uh, early 70s. And um, it did help. Uh, the POWs started getting better treatment. Uh, the MIAs uh, were accounted for and uh, the POWs, uh, most of them came home in 1973. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this wall uh, and this display came about. On Veterans Day uh, 2014, uh, we uh, had an unveiling of the F-104. Uh, the guys in restoration did a, done a great job uh, with it. And uh, so we had that, the unveiling and we also dedicated uh, the aircraft to Colonel Norm Schmidt. Colonel Schmidt was a uh, F-104 pilot uh, in Vietnam, got shot down over North Vietnam. Uh, the bad guys got him. Uh, he ended up in the Hanoi Hilton. And one year to a day later, uh, they took him away to interrogate him. Uh, he never came back. Uh, they tortured him to death. This is Bob Lilac, one of our volunteers. Uh, Bob also was a 104 pilot. Uh, Colonel Schmidt was his uh, CO and best friend. And so it was Bob's idea that we dedicate the aircraft uh, to Colonel Schmidt. Uh, that day was a most emotional day, uh, Colonel Smith's widow, Marie, and uh, many of the family members, including their grandson, uh, attended. And um, it, like I said, it was a very emotional day. In January, uh, a phone call came into the museum and I spoke to this lady, uh, Christy Snabel, and she had seen an article in the Desert Sun about uh, the unveiling of the and the dedication of the 104. She realized she still had her bracelet that she had worn as a little girl with Colonel Smith's name on it. So she asked if she, we could set up uh, a meeting where she could return it to Marie, the widow. So I said, yeah, we can do that, and which we did in February. And here he, uh, she's returning it to Marie, and the, the grandson was really looking for a bracelet of his granddad. Uh, so, and there are the three of them together. Uh, when I was uh, speaking to her in January, she mentioned that uh, her mom had worn a bracelet uh, of another uh, MIA uh, in this case, uh, and uh, they still had that bracelet. And I said, well, would you like to donate it to the museum? Uh, and so they did. So that same day, uh, we got our first bracelet. I did a little research, again, realized five million bracelets were worn back in the day. There had to be still a lot of them around. At the time, we were contemplating building this Korea-Vietnam hangar. So I thought that um, a, a bracelet display uh, would be most appropriate. Uh, so that's how it got, all got started. My first idea was I wanted to have a wall. Um, uh, unlike the wall, in, the Vietnam Wall in Washington, which is beautiful, uh, I wanted this wall to have 
pictures of these guys' names on it. Now this particular wall that we have here, there are 714 POWs. Uh, 74, uh, again, most of them came home in 73. Uh, 74 did not, they died in captivity, similar to uh, Colonel Schmidt. I also wanted to honor the people that wore the braces. And so the wall, as you will see, not only has a photo of the POW, uh, but also a photo of the person who donated the bracelet uh, that was taken back in the day when they first got their bracelet, when they first started wearing it. We now have close to 1,900 bracelets and we are still receiving them from time to time. Uh, if any of you have a bracelet, we'd be honored to include it. If you know anyone who has, uh, likewise, and likewise, if you want to be part of it, and even though you don't have a bracelet, I can order a bracelet, uh, particularly a bracelet that we might need uh, uh, for $25 if you would like to make a donation towards that. Um, or if you have a friend or a family member that was lost in Vietnam, um, I can order a bracelet for them for you to, uh, uh, to honor them uh, that we would put, include in the display. We also have uh, two touchscreen uh, displays here. I'm, you can see one of them. And on these, we have the narratives of all the POWs as well as the MIAs and any of the KIAs that we have uh, braces for. The MIAs, uh, there were 2,646 of those, guys who never came back. Uh, of those, uh, there are still about 1,500 that have not been, uh, the remains have yet to be recovered. Uh, and there's ongoing uh, efforts for that through the DPAA and other organizations. I didn't have room to put them on the uh, wall, uh, but I thought, well, the, uh, the MIAs are all on the, uh, the wall in, in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, because they died. Uh, POWs are not, other than the 74 that died in captivity. So I thought, well, the wall here would be like a, <clears throat> the POW's wall. But uh, we, I've, I've researched and written up the story for all the uh, uh, MIAs as well as the POWs and, and the KIAs that we have. <clears throat> and uh, also uh, a story about the person who donated the bracelet. Um, and I'll show you here kind of how we do that. So this is a typical one. And so it tells uh, the story about uh, uh, Captain Ann here who uh, was a, a uh, Air Force uh, pilot uh, shot down. He was a POW and didn't come back. And the little girl who had his bracelet uh, back in the day. This picture that we have here, this is another lady who donated a bracelet. She happened to have John McCain's bracelet that she wore when she was a little girl and uh, she donated that, donated that several years ago. Uh, a couple years ago, she stopped by the museum, and we got a picture of her uh, present day uh, by her uh, display page. On the wall here, <coughs> this is a, an order form uh, for people who might have a bracelet to donate, or if they want to order one uh, as well. And uh, so if you're down here and you see somebody, and you can give them one of these. And on the back side, it uh, kind of has uh, tells us tells them a little bit about uh, what we have going on here. Over here we have a, a video that runs all day long. <laughs> it lasts about an hour and a half 
and it shows the POWs when they were coming home in uh, 73. Uh, it shows them when they uh, are walking out of Hanoi Hilton, uh, when they're getting on uh, the three uh, aircraft that flew them uh, first to uh, uh, the Philippines uh, and uh, to Clark Field and then back to the States. Uh, and I think this is, might be in the Philippines here, I'm not sure. On the wall here, <clears throat> this we have a uh, 10 little, three minute little vignettes uh, that we show. There are 10 uh, POWs that told their stories and we've cut them down to, uh, they talk about how they got shot down, they're all pilots, how they got captured, being in solitary confinement, what that was like, torture, how they communicate and use the TAP code, which is that code up there explains it, and freedom, this, how they came. And then there's a few other things uh, that are interesting too. This here is Sonny and Cher, and uh, they, in their uh, TV show, always wore braces. And this is Hayden Lockhart, who's a POW, and Cher wore his bracelet. The three large uh, pictures that you see up there, uh, I wanted to have going into captivity, on the left, coming home on the right. And I wanted the bracelets to be a big part of it, uh, which they were, and to kind of honor the people that wore those bracelets. So the middle girl has to be my granddaughter. And I was down in San Diego a couple years ago at Christmas time. I said, get a couple of your girlfriends, dress them up like back in the, the 70s. And they got their bracelets on, the old wooden tennis racket, and their dad's old car there, so that kind of ties it all together. This is a bracelet tree. It's called a freedom tree. And uh, it has over 1,000 uh, bracelets uh, that makes up the tree. Uh, there was a man, young man in uh, L.A. Uh, who built it uh, back around 1972. And uh, he now lives in Colorado. Uh, but uh, I made contact with him uh, about the time we opened this, this uh, hangar and uh, he was looking for a place like this to, to put it and so he drove it out here and we put it back together and now we have it and it's pretty special as well. This is a box of uh, duplicate bracelets that I have in the uh, ready room. So next time that you come in, uh, be sure and take one. It's yours to keep. We'd like for you to wear it whenever you're on duty here. It brings attention to that, and uh, it might uh, help a person remember, oh, yes, I have a bracelet, and then you could talk to them about our display, and uh, perhaps they would uh, donate it to us. Or they might want to uh, uh, purchase one for the display as well. So. Uh, yours to keep and wear it anytime you want. Uh, I wear mine a lot anytime I go out anywhere uh, uh, to uh, Sam's or uh, any place like that. And uh, people sometimes ask me about it, uh, so it's, uh, it's a good thing to do. Now I'm up in the uh, museum library, and uh, in the background are uh, uh, close to 1900 uh, DVDs. Uh, of um, oral histories that we have uh, conducted interviews of over the past, uh, well, since the year 2000. And we also are part, or we're partners with the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So we also send a DV to, DVD to the Library of Congress, and they uh, put those DVDs on their website. So in addition to that, we also uh, transcribe uh, into print form uh, for here in the library. I would encourage you if uh, you've served in the military uh, to take part in, in this. Uh, we'd love to interview you or and or if uh, you have any friends that uh, you know that uh, uh, you think would like to be interviewed we'd be happy to do them as well.